So the last five years, I've been running Titans, which is a boutique legal technology consultancy. And we work with uh, pretty large legal service providers in both the UK and the US uh, and elsewhere in the world. And the main services that we provide for them is threefold. So firstly, do a lot of work around technology strategy. And um, at the moment, of course, that relates a lot to Gen AI. So helping people to understand the market, where are the opportunities, what are the risks, what are people actually doing, and kind of diving below some of the headlines that people might see to get a real understanding of where the market is at and where it is going. So that's a large chunk of the work that we do is on the strategy side of things, working with executive teams and CTOs and CIOs and head of innovation. The second particular service that we offer is end-to-end -end, uh, procurement of technology. So that includes helping people to understand the particular challenge that they're looking to solve for, going out to the market, picking relevant vendors to bring into the RFP process, and then running a very structured and mature buying process on behalf of the legal service provider, where we effectively go through the RFP process, run pilots, and then help with the selection and then scaling that product within the, within the customer. So total end-to-end -end process, helping bring maturity there. And the third particular service that we offer is custom development work uh, for legal service providers. And that's often things like building custom add-ons or integrations for their existing tech stack. So that's kind of a quick whistle-stop tour of what I do with Titans. And also worth uh, calling out as well, I often forget, but worth calling out that I do as well, <laughs> on the legal tech trends newsletter so that is a newsletter i publish uh, every my few favorite weeks. one okay yeah i really appreciate the all the kind words marco it's the the kind words that you provide keep me going <laughs> i will <laughs> and so with that newsletter effectively it is a collection of what is interesting topics happening in the market and kind of what is resonating with me most and helping to kind of shine a light on some of the great stuff that's so I'd say the biggest opportunity right now, honestly, is just general appetite in the market for change. That historically, you know, there have been pockets of interest about introducing technology or changing ways of working, but it has been pockets. And within legal service providers, it has traditionally been quite challenging to get the time of lawyers to engage with different initiatives or to, allow, to roll out new technology. So the biggest opportunity really is there was massive desire now for change and for improvement that yes, the focus is on Gen AI and that's what a lot of the, kind of, uh, the conversations may start there. But taking a step back, it's that general interest and excitement and appetite for change brings people to the table. And then once actually at the table, you can have a you know, mature conversation about what might actually be the best route forward. Again, not always technology and certainly not always just AI, but it's just a general market appetite to engage and to do things differently, which presents phenomenal opportunities now to actually uh, capitalize on that engagement. I'd like to jump in with what, one of my usual out of the blue questions, uh, Adasa, but, <laughs> um, but I think it's pretty relevant because um, I'm sure uh, you have heard, Peter, I'm pretty confident about the uh, paradigm like uh, people process tech, which is sort of a mantra that is repeated in, in the legal tech sector a lot to understand that tech comes in the end uh, before there's a lot to talk about. My question to you is in your most recent um, your your most recent work and, and advice to your clients, how many times have you discussed about people or somehow understanding who are the best fits or best skills required? And having those sorts of very delicate conversations, maybe with employers, where they need to understand that before actively looking for uh, a piece of tech to buy, they probably need to have a look, as you said before, doing a step back and also taking a look at what their kind of um, team rosters is composed, let's say, as a, as a basketball team. Have you ever had recently uh, discussions around this? Yes, absolutely. To be honest, every single project I do, <laughs> that <laughs> when it comes to discussion, even when it's rolling out technology or picking a particular problem, deciding who do you start with. So yeah. if you are to you know, solve a problem, like within a given, uh, let's say a given law firm, 
what department you start with, or even within that department, which team within the department. So let's say, for example, you're speaking about a particular technology that could be introduced to the corporate team. Uh, well, the corporate team may have many different partners, and within those different partner groups, who is the most engaged? Who has the most appetite for change? Who is likely to provide most uh, time when it comes to actually deciding um, you know, what technology is being introduced or be most open to change in their existing ways of working? So the people are a really key part of everything. Um, and every, yeah, every single project I have, we always very mindful of who is going to be involved. Um, because the thing is too, as a consultant, you know, I am on the, I'm on outside advisory. I'm not there forever with clients. So it's really important. And that's not supposed to be the way, you know, to come in and support where needed and then allow people to run for themselves. But it's being really mindful of, as well about who is going to take on the initiative know after it has commenced and you need to have those engaged people internally both the end users of you know any given product but also from a delivery perspective that who is going to oversee the change management uh, who is going to keep on driving the improvements and helping with that rollout so people are absolutely critical and at the start of every single project you know, there's a, a stakeholder list who are understanding who's who do we have from the support internally why the different groups are going to tackle first what is the phasing on that so to your point absolutely it's content center every single time just to add one flavor to that just to kind of ground it in specific examples too if you think about it even from a document automation point of view and for document automation we work very closely with the amazing Catherine Bamford who's known as the best document automation person in the world and when it comes to hi Catherine hi Catherine <laughs> she's a wonderful lucky to work with her every day and um if you think about even just very concrete examples for document automation. If you are automating specific templates, you need the input of a subject matter expert to determine what you know what logic is going to be uh, what is going to be automated within a particular template and to assist with the testing of that. So the people who are who you pick are absolutely critical, and if they don't participate in in, in the program in the delivery, it just halts. So it's such a clear example of if you do not have the right people, then the project goes nowhere. And that's why we're super mindful, not just for document automation, but for every other project about who we involve and who we pick. And that's why the projects go so smoothly, because we put that upfront effort into considering who's best to be involved at what different phases. The big one is people hearing firsthand experience from those who are further along the journey. So, and honestly, that, that's a big part of what I do is helping people make smarter decisions. And by just being able to have sensible, mature conversations with people and be like, okay, you are looking to go down this particular path. Just so you know, this is where the path leads. Here are the different options that are available. If you make these choices now, this is where you are likely to end up based on what I have seen elsewhere and what others have done. So by being able to like ground it in reality of the experience of others and what is likely to happen, that really kind of, uh, gives people the information and insights they need to then understand that it's not just about the technology. By hearing, you know, what is likely to happen from people who have who have been there, that really helps to, to frame the conversation. Yeah, well firstly on the kind of this kind of transition into the legal tech world was in one sense to start my own consultancy, I was very lucky because I had had five years at Deloitte, which is you know massive consultancy, does stuff at scale, does stuff very, very well. So then starting a boutique consultancy with that kind of point of reference is, is relatively straightforward. And the projects are a lot smaller. They're not at the scale of, you know, hundreds of people delivering massive, massive projects. So in that sense, that the, the actual work itself is a lot more straightforward and a lot easier. Um, but to be honest, in terms of falling into legal, it, it was totally by chance by chance um, that I had after I left Deloitte I started consulting initially back to Deloitte on commercial banking mobile app and then after that they got in touch to support with Deloitte legal ventures um, and that was my first foray into legal five years ago and absolutely loved it the team was amazing the problems we solved there were, were fantastic and that was kind of the the entry point so and the the journey since then um, again I think I've been pretty fortunate in because of the people that you know came across my path i sat beside Catherine bamford when i was in deloitte and when we had both left deloitte then i started working immediately with her and the people that she introduced me to i started working for example 
uh, with DWF. I was there for almost three years, and it's it's kind of been a series of fortunate events because of people who've taken care of me. Um, so I think it's made my life a hell of a lot easier because I've had yeah the fortune to work with people I call a very close friends who have made that journey easier. <laughs>